In this Prince August project, we are going to make a silicon rubber mold out of this plastic railway track. We are going to use modelling clay to embed the track in that clay. We will use this rolling pin to flatten out the modelling clay. Here is an ordinary kitchen knife that would be used to assist in the flattening and also a small tool to push the clay against the the model itself. We're going to use an underlay board, a piece of hardwood, and we're going to have two tubs, each half a kilo of silicon rubber. These need to be mixed together to create a final result. We'll use a stainless steel container as well as a spoon to give it a proper stir up. If you don't have a stainless steel container, you can try and use a plastic bottle or some other flat uh, bottomed container. Modeling clay does get hard if it's not used, so it will need to be heated up in order to make it malleable. As you can see here, it's actually quite firm and hard, and it's not really suitable in this form. Place the clay in your oven for about 15 minutes at 45 degrees centigrade to warm it up. Now that it's more malleable, begin to combine together to create one solid block. Use a rolling pin to flatten out the clay into a white slab about one centimeter thick. Once completed, gently peel it off the table and you can start preparing it on the underlay board. You need to lay down the track on the slab so you can position it to see how much space you need. There are areas that we will be attaching an in gate to, so place it at one side of the slab, not in the middle. We're going to use a pre made uh, in gate and place it at one end so that the metal will have a place to flow into the mould. We also need a space for the air to be pushed out and therefore putting what we call a riser at the other side. This is just to let uh, a gap for the air to move into and the excess metal to flow. There are some undercuts that need to be removed from the track uh, as that would catch in the mould when it's been cast. These can be just cut away using a flat sided snips. Then put the track back on the clay, push it down as close as you can into the clay to avoid any gaps. Carefully make sure that it's firmly positioned. Now we're going to be cutting away the excess clay. You can leave uh, about uh, 20 millimeters all around at least. The smaller the mould, the more economical it is. Then you need to begin to flatten the corners. There are small spaces that need to be filled. You can use a little bit of the clay to shove it into those corners and those gaps. The clay is very malleable and economical, so you can always remove or add as much as you need. Once completed, begin to push the clay against the master so that there is zero gaps because that will distort the eventual casting. So carefully pad it all the way around on all sides so that it's flush with the clay. Now we're going to need to put little marks in the clay to allow you to be able to grip the two sides of the moulds together. And um, when you've done that, it, uh, gently rub down any little edge from the impressions. And now we can move on to the next part, which is the walls around the mold. Same principle, warm the clay, roll it down into a, into a nice block, slice it so that you remove any of the excess clay. The, the amount of, of the length of a wall uh, can be measured 
uh, using a bit of string if you want, uh, around the mold, or just uh, use your own gut instinct. Uh, if you don't have enough clay to, uh, for the first one, you can always add more clay and then just blend it together, creating your first large strip. Make sure there's no gaps and it's not going to break apart when you pick it up. Now, find the spot to start and gently attach it to the edge of the mold all the way around to create a wall entirely around the mold. If you have a little space left over, make another piece and just attach it to it. Very simple. Now we're going to be putting Vaseline on the base of the mold to help it resist the silicone rubber from being stuck to the bottom of the mold. You don't need to do it on the track itself as it's plastic and that will automatically resist being stuck to the silicone. Give a nice even coating all around the bottom of the base. The walls don't matter since you're going to be peeling them off anyway. Now we're going to be adding 250 grams of each tub about half the total contents of the tub. You can use the scales to work it out. As you can see, 250 of the blue, then another 250 making a total of about 500 of the clear white. And then mix it all together. You need to give a good stir so that it becomes a solid consistency. Now, there's lots of bubbles. And this is because air has got trapped during the mixing. We're going to be using a vacuum chamber. Uh, we put a thick, piece of perspex on top of the vacuum chamber to seal it and we're going to apply pressure using the machine here to reduce the pressure so that the air bubbles expand and you'll see the air bubbles continually expanding and the liquid will begin to fill up and froth up and then they'll pop and burst and it will just collapse back down all the bubbles will begin to explode getting rid of that air in the mold there you go. Now it's, the rubber is perfectly smooth. You can begin to pour it into the prepared area. Pour it nice and gently from one end to the next. What you want to do is avoid trapping air inside the mold. Air bubbles will contaminate the final casting. There you go. Put it into a fridge for a few hours. Then you can take it out and we can get on to the next stage. We're going to slice and cut away the now solid walls. The mold is firm, so you don't have to worry about that. Just cut it all the way, all the way around, and then begin to clean away the walls. Peel it away from the base using a knife gently, and then remove the clay again from the mold. Take time, peel it away carefully. You don't want to rip or tear the mold itself. Then remove any of the plaster in or the clay uh, from the actual track. Carefully work your way around. Do not dislodge the track itself. Once you've got down to uh, the last little bit, remove it with a cloth. And if there's any tiny bits left over, use a little pick to, to, to scrape that away. Now you should just have the track and the silicon rubber. Again, uh, uh, we're going to warm up the clay for about 15 minutes at 45 degrees Celsius. We're going to have to rewarm up the, the, the clay so we can begin to make the second part of the mold. Before we do, we clean up the edges. There will always be a little bit of uh, bleed and therefore we need to clean that up to get a nice even flat edge using a scalpel that is ideal create the second part of the wall same principle as the first cut away the excess attach it to the silicon just like you did the first time creating the second wall add the vaseline Again, to the blue silicon to stop one side sticking to the other. Mix the two remaining uh, amounts to create another 500 grams of 
of the uh, silicon. Use the vacuum chamber again. Then pour it from one end to the other, all the way up to fill every last little bit, scrape it all out. Once it has set, follow the same procedures you did the first time, remove the, the wall. You won't need a clay again, so don't worry about it. Just push it away, roll it up and, and tear it off. Gently peel the two silicon rubber parts asunder and now you've got your two halves. Remove the track carefully, it's no longer needed and the ingate and riser can also be removed. Use a sharp knife to help remove the little bit of rubber that is between the ingate and the riser and the actual track so that the, there will be a free flow of air and metal in, in those two areas. And again, just clean off any little lip of rubber that has bled up the side. So you get two flat layers. Then you can attach the mold together. It should form a seamless segment and you're ready. Now begin to apply talcum powder, a release agent to both sides. Then give them a clap to remove the excess, assemble the mold, put on some thick support boards we've custom made for this mold. Because of the amount of metal and the size, we're using three clamps per side to hold the mold together. Space them out evenly. And now we've heated up our metal. It's, it's model metal. We scoop it up and pour it into the mold. Due to the amount of volume needed, we will need to do two scoops to completely fill the mold. Right up to the top. Give it a few taps, it helps to shake out any air pockets. And then after about 10 minutes, open the mold carefully to reveal your casting. It's still going to be warm, so be careful. Do not touch it, especially the ingate. Once it's cooled enough, you can remove it and check both sides to see how it looks and cut off the ingate and it's ready for use. Thank you.